Communicative language teaching is primarily about giving learners something meaningful to do with the language. And so jigsaw reading is a really good way of getting learners to have a real reason to read and also to give them an authentic speaking task. Fundamentally, the idea is pretty simple. Two or more learners read different texts and then they tell each other about what they've read. But there are a few tips and hints that will make things run a little bit more smoothly. I'm Joga Conga from ELT Training and I'm here to give you a few of those tips and hints. I want to divide this into two areas. Things to think about when you're preparing to do a jigsaw reading and then things to think about when you're actually in the classroom. Okay, so you're preparing for this. The first thing to think about is the type of text you can use because some texts definitely work better than others for this. If you've got something that's continuous prose, like a newspaper article, this doesn't work so well. If you split this up into three, the person who gets the third part isn't going to find it very easy to get the gist of the whole thing. It's much better if you can use short readings that are different and self-contained but related to each other. For example, you could use three different film reviews like this or two different descriptions of cities like this. Just as a bit of a tip here too, in terms of number of texts, you have to have at least two and more than three probably gets not so manageable. So I'd suggest two or three. You could use four, but I'd say that's definitely a maximum. Another tip here in terms of preparation is that the texts need to be interesting. That's always a good rule to follow with reading texts, I guess. And it's probably a good idea if they're not too difficult in terms of the level of the learners. If there's vocabulary in the text you feel you usually pre-teach, you could put a glossary at the bottom in English or in the learner's first language if you've got a monolingual class, um, because it feels a bit odd to pre-teach vocabulary out of two texts when the learners have only got one. So finally, when you're preparing for this, the learners will need a task to do. Ideally, what you want is that both groups have the same questions. Obviously, they'll have different answers to these. This isn't mandatory, but it does make it work more smoothly. Here's an example of some questions that you could possibly ask about this kind of text. Now, if you've given them the same questions, it means that you give them some kind of grid like this, and that'll make the whole thing run more smoothly too. Okay, so now you're prepared what happens in the classroom? Well, with any reading text, of course, it's a good idea to set the scene. You need to get them thinking about what they're going to read about. So an example could be get them to describe a city to their neighbour and see if the neighbour can guess, or possibly get them to talk about a holiday that they've had, that they've enjoyed. That kind of personalised task often works well. Now you need to think about splitting up the groups. If you've got two texts like this, then you need to have two groups, group A and group B. Give one half of the room the one text about New York and the other half of the room the text about Tahiti. Give them some time to read and answer the questions and then get them to check their answers together with the person next to them. This kind of peer checking is really important for a few reasons. The main one is it'll give you the opportunity to monitor and make sure everyone's got the right answers, but it'll also give every, the learners more confidence when they have to talk about the text in the next stage. So it's all good, really. OK, so you know they've got the answers for their text. Now you may need to do some rearranging. You could just tell them to find a partner from the other side but in my experience, this tends to lead to complete chaos. So the easiest way is to number them. So in group A, you have one, two, three, four, and the same in group B, one, two, three, four. Another little handy hint here is it is a good idea to ask one or two of them who's number two and make sure that they know. So now you need to be quite directive and tell them. Number one's over here, number two's here, number three's here, number four's here and then get them to move and hopefully all will be sweetness and light. At this point, it all seems like it should be fairly straightforward. They just t tell each other about the texts, but there are some problems that can raise their ugly heads. One of the ones is that they just show each other 
their text or their answers. Now remember, what you want to do is get them to speak. So you need to be clear, you can't show your texts or answers to each other. You have to talk. Another problem is that one group inevitably will finish much faster than the others because they'll just give very simple answers. Again, one answer to this is just be quite directive about timing. When you set up the groups, say, A, you have two minutes to tell B about your place so that she can answer the questions. B, just listen. Give them the two minutes and then maybe ask B. You can ask any questions you want to make sure you understand. And then swap over. B, you have two minutes to tell A about your place so that she can answer the questions. A, just listen. Give them two minutes again or as long as it takes and then ask A to ask any questions. This way, everybody will be approximately in the same place at the same time. So at this point, they should all have the answers to both the texts, the one they've read and the one they've been told about. So go back to the original groups and get them to peer check again to make sure that they've got the answers for the second text. You could monitor at this point to see how they got on. And at the end, if you think it's necessary, you can check the answers, but you probably won't need to. So that's pretty much it for jigsaw reading. It's not that tricky, but you could use it as a basis for some follow-up activities too. So a couple of ideas are that you could get them to read the text that the other group had, maybe look at some of the language in both of the texts, grammar or vocabulary, and then get them to use that to write another text of their own on a similar theme. Another idea is to get them in pairs to write a version of the other text before they see it using the answers that they've got about it. This is quite nice because afterwards you can get them to check what they've written against the original and see if the difference is. Okay, I hope that that's been useful and has given you some ideas for jigsaw reading. If you'd like some more ideas about English language teaching in general, then do go to my website, alttraining.com. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Bye.